Well, now we're here uh, with uh, Mike Harley. Uh, we talked to him uh, the last time, I think, in New York, Outer Show, and he's the editor-in-chief of Outer Web. Uh, so how are you, Michael? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me back on. So we've been uh, sharing a few days together <laughs> on the road. Uh, we started in Detroit uh, for the new Camaro, 2016 Camaro, and now we're in New York where we drove uh, several Jaguar cars. So let's see if we can get them, like all them, in like 10 minutes. <laughs> no problem, so It seems like the, uh, the weather's been following us along as well. Uh, you know, it was raining in Detroit and it's raining out here. So let's start with the Camaro. What do you think about like, the whole thing? I mean, like, it was a pretty special way of uh, introducing a car, huh? The it, was, it was interesting because most automakers launch a car at an auto show where there's, uh, you know, it's a pre-planned event and they've got the press and the media on site. And instead, Chevrolet decided to launch this as a, as a customer event yeah. you know, outside the normal auto show circuit. And uh, they were they had like I think 1,000 cars there with like old previous owners and Mari Barra, CEO of GM, was around there talking to them and all that. But that was kind of cool. I think it was kind of interesting to see that, right? It was nice. It was also uh, it, it emphasized the importance of the the Camaro brand and uh, the Camaro buyer. So it yeah. was nice to see them introduce the vehicle um, in an arena that allowed the owners. Over a thousand, a couple thousand owners were on site with over a thousand cars, and it was nice to see all the Camaros over the generations and. Uh, it was good. Yeah, so I was kind fun. of surprised actually to see how, how loyal they are and how big the, the group is because I'm assuming this is a group like around the Detroit area, not only from Detroit. I mean, there were a lot and there were like a lot of gold cars like representing all the five first generations. But there were cars that had been driven up from Texas, right, so. Texas plates, Florida plates. I mean, you know, these. There's some loyal yeah. people out there, and they did a lot of customizing on their cars as you well. You would expect more that, like, I always expect at least more, like, from a Ford Mustang or something like that, but not a Camaro. So I was kind of surprised. I was also surprised to see how ugly some of them were. Uh, there were... Um, <laughs> from the 80s. Uh, I'll be nice, but some of them <laughs> oh, were, yeah. were less than tasteful. Uh, I know. I mean, there, there comes a point when you modify your car, and when you have to stop. No, I'm not and saying some, the modifying. I mean, the originals. <laughs> oh, you're talking the original yeah. cars. I'm talking... Some of the modifications were just a little I over know. the top. I mean, they'd, they'd lost functionality. We saw LED lights inside the wheel wells. And yeah, uh, to an works? enthusiast, know. they know that's one of the hottest parts of the car. Exactly. And I, I think you have molten LED lights after a few miles on a racing circuit. He probably doesn't drive it much, I would say. It didn't look like many of those have been driven much. But. Yeah. So let's uh, move to the new car. I mean, uh, what's your first impression of that car? I, I liked it. I, I think it looks good. Like the design, obviously, they haven't changed it much because you, they want to keep it like for those loyal fans right yeah it's interesting from uh from 200 yards away if you're chasing one down the down the freeway or the highway you're not going to really notice the difference between yeah. the 15 and the 16 especially to a casual observer obviously the camaro enthusiasts are going to understand but from the outside you know it's an evolutionary change Absolutely, it's not a radical yeah. change so it's uh i believe two inches smaller two thousand two hundred pounds lighter so it's like a big, big change in the engineering. Right, and uh, it's the platform, that's the big deal. Yeah. It's now sharing the platform with the uh, the Cadillac ATS. So what do you think about that? Like the sharing, I mean, like, I guess we kind of know a little bit more than regular people, like sharing the platform, like, is that good or bad? Because the cars are starting to look or be similar, no? Uh, well, first of all, let me address the first question. I think it's actually a very good thing because what it allows the, the engineers and the engineering teams to do is to spend a lot of money building one yeah. platform. So they can over-engineer that platform knowing they're going to build three or four cars on it. And if you've got a billion dollar budget, you could spend all the money on yeah. one instead of saying, hey, I'm going to split it 15 different ways. So that's what Volkswagen is doing with uh, what it's called the uh, Mark B platform, right? Like they build pretty much right, a lot right. of, of their cars on that Audi. Right. Well, they have a, a front-wheel drive, yeah. transverse longitudinal. You know, they have different platforms. They fit everything in there. So, and uh, on the interior of the car, that changed more. Like, oh, uh, night and day. Like, uh, yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll be good. the first to admit that I was not a big fan of the previous generation, even the 15 model Camaro interior. I thought it was a. Uh, a lousy attempt at retro, I know. and it just it Especially didn't work. Especially those door panels. Really. Yeah, it didn't. I mean, I didn't like the center console. I didn't like anything about it. And the new one is uh, probably one of GM's best interiors, yeah. hands really down. I mean, 
really really good yeah really nice and then we got to drive the car for like what three minutes maybe i don't know maybe uh, you went twice if you, go, if you went slow it's three minutes if you were fast around the track it's two minutes and 50 seconds <laughs> so what do you think about the driving i mean if it's very short time in the it, car uh, but know, like, what's your first impression we of that? drove it around the uh the detroit uh grand prix racing circuit yeah well, none I of us none of us had ever driven the track before so we did a lead follow behind a pro who was familiar and uh you know from it was nice because we were able to drive the 15 first, then we drove the 16 after I that. I think that was a good idea. But uh, obviously, it's going to drive a little lighter and be stiffer yeah. and a better flat front. I mean, it drives, you know, it drives really, really well. Yeah, it's a it's a good uh, good car. That I mean, a good sales volume car for them. Like, so it's not yes. going to keep doing that. I mean, yes. even against the new Mustang, which the Mustang Correct. is really nice. It'll be. I can't wait to drive both cars back to back, and. Uh, like I said, the the big news on the Camaro is uh, the platform and the fact that the interior is just really, really nice. You know, they didn't resort to any uh, gimmicky, all-glass displays or yeah. anything like that. Um, one of the most amazing things when you go check it out is just in front of the shifter, low on the dashboard in the center of the console, are the air vents. Mm -hmm. uh, the center oh, that air was vents. a nice, nice touch. And uh, they have used the outside bevels. Uh, of those vents to control the temperature and fan speeds and that's a brilliant move because it basically takes HVAC which are the heating, venting, yeah. air conditioning controls and uh, removes the need for that whole cluster but brilliant move. Very good. Uh, so about brilliant moves we moved from Detroit to New York <laughs> to see uh, to, for the Jaguar event, uh, Jaguar Land Rover event actually we started with uh, Range Rover Sport SVR. I mean, that's a monster of an SUV. I mean, it's a monster of an SUV. It's also a very long name if you're going to tweet it. You've got a yeah. Land Rover that's Range why I went Rover slow Sport it, yeah. SVR. <laughs> yeah. And I think you're going to have a couple typos in there, but uh, but it's a big truck too. Yeah, what a fantastic car. I mean, I think uh, the I mean, we're talking to the Jaguar Land Rover people here, and ori originally the program for this event was more the F type with the all wheel drive and the manual transmission, but I think that car stole the show for them. Yeah, the car did steal the show. Uh, it is a, it, it's a monster of a truck. I mean, it's a, it's an all aluminum uh, crossover SUV uh, with a 550 horsepower supercharged V8. Um, 550 yeah. horsepower. Yeah, I mean, that very <laughs> very capable. I mean, zero to sixty in less than five seconds, and it's just um, incredibly capable off road. We played in the mud in it. Yeah. And we went through water, mud, and then they pressure washed it, which was pretty cool. They put it up on a, a 40 degree ramp and pressure washed the bottom, and then we drove directly onto the track. That's and pretty cool because it, it really tells you the Land Rover cars, Range Rover, Land Rover, I mean, how capable they are, and they can really be two personalities in just like in a flip of a second or like a flip of a hose when you wash it. I mean, the car went off road, as you said, and then like on the track. And I think, I don't know what was your experience, but I had more fun driving that on the track than the F-Type. Yeah, we'll get to the F-Type in a second. And uh, that's one thing that uh, Land Rover really wants uh, to stress is the uh, operating envelope. Yeah. The ability for it to do so well off-road, above and beyond just inclement weather, and the ability for it to do so well in the Monticello racetrack. That's a racing circuit, you know, for, you know Formula Challenging. 1 cars yeah, can yeah, go yeah, out yeah. there. Exactly. And uh, it's able to handle each of those, I mean, literally back-to-back. -back. And it's uh, one of those cars uh, that Nobody really needs, but once you drive it, <laughs> you really enjoy it. They you are. I mean, anywhere. you know, we've we've skipped over all the engineering and uh, the the appointments, the yeah. leathers, the Every, woods, yeah. the carbon fibers. They smell beautiful. Everything you touch is wonderful. They they finished every square inch of it. I mean, they're safe. It feels like driving a vault. Exactly. Uh, it's not cheap though. I mean, it's like a hundred and uh, about hundred to hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's it's nice. So let's we have like three more minutes. Let's talk about the F type. Very important car for Jaguar because they started it with like two years ago with three variants and now they have 14 all-wheel drive manual transmission convertible coupe and everything so it's an important car for jaguar huh? it's basically jaguars uh if you know like jaguars 3 series jaguars 911 yeah. and jaguars corvette i mean very so, important car uh sp speaking about the competition jaguar said at the beginning at least that this is like direct competitor of the 911 you're an expert in that field so what do you think about that uh i would actually disagree maybe um on paper but uh, to me, it drives a lot more like a Corvette than a 911. Yeah. Uh, you know, when they talk about their three different, their four competitors, um, you know, I look at this more of a muscle car GT yeah. versus a um, 
you know, dedicated lightweight sports car. I mean, the F-Type is a little bit heavier. It's also first generation. You're, you're going up against a Corvette, uh, BMW M4, and you're yeah, going up a 911. Forever, forever, yeah. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh generation yeah. cars. I mean, it's an excellent execution. Yeah, no, absolutely. Job. I mean, I, I, I enjoy I'll be driving. the first to recommend it. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy driving both, especially, I mean, the V8 with the Again, 550 horsepower. That was amazing. But today we drove the B6 with the manual transmission. That was fun too. It's a. We dropped about 200 horsepower overnight. By the <laughs> yeah. way, we went from the V8 supercharged to the six-cylinder supercharged. But uh, this is genuinely their enthusiast model. It's yeah. their one of their lightest models. It's got the least amount of weight in the nose, so it quickly turns, and uh, it's got a manual transmission with no rev matching. This is a true manual manual with no electronic yeah. intervention. And and again, like the interior is beautiful. I mean, I don't know what car you were driving. I was driving a silver one with like black wheels and then the red interior. That was a fantastic combination. I had a red one with black leather, wall-to-wall -wall oh, leather, with red seat belts and black wheels. <laughs> it was it's spectacular. I mean, there uh, we had a truck stopped while we were on the side of the road, and he yelled out, "Hey, is that a Ferrari?" <laughs> All right. And, uh, and uh, this car, car. Uh, talking about price, this guy uh, starts at sixty-five, which is not Correct. bad. You get no, a lot that's of cars for that. Yeah. Yeah. And so, Michael, tell us about Auto Web before we leave. How, how Auto are you Web is really, really, really well. Uh, we've got two different sites. We have a car configure car configurator where you can go on there and build uh, your next vehicle, or you can check our editorial site and get our car reviews and news. Excellent. So we're going to look for your uh, review on the Camaro, which is going to come, I guess, in a few days. I'm not, no pressure to get no your work. No pressure It should go up the next day or two. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Michael. Uh, we really enjoyed the, the trip, and I uh, hope to see you again on the road. Uh, I don't know what's going to be the next, but it'll be fun again. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. Bye.